you're going to focus on the skills needed to produce a good course essay. The historical topic we'll be discussing is Russia between 1917 and 1929, looking firstly at Lenin and then at Stalin's rise to power. In this section, we'll focus on three main areas of Lenin's government, the Civil War and, in particular, the reasons for the Bolshevik victory. The significance of 1921 as a key year in Lenin's government and an assessment of Lenin's success. To place these issues in context, a brief overview of the coming to power of the Bolshevik government in October 1917 is helpful. Will, over to you. In February of 1917, discontent boiled over into revolution. This was a result of a range of factors, such as increasing dissatisfaction at Tsarist autocratic rule and a rigid social structure despite economic changes. Russian entry into World War I made the situation worse. Economic hardship, coupled with dire food shortages, became all the harder to bear when news of military failures arrived home. On the 27th of February 1917, the Winter Palace in Petrograd was stormed and a Petrograd Soviet established. Demonstrations continued and, with the withdrawal of support from the Duma, Tsar Nicholas II was left with little option than to abdicate on the 2nd of March 1917. This established a provisional government, which between March and October faced a series of problems. They were unable to unite the many disparate groups that emerged in the chaos. Lawlessness ravaged the countryside, and many groups were disappointed at the lack of change they had expected from the new government. Just like the Tsar's government before them, the continuation of the war led to increasing dissatisfaction as the defeats continued. Desertion and dissatisfaction were commonplace amongst the rank and file of the army. Unlike Lenin, the Central Committee of the Bolshevik Party remained unconvinced that the time was right for the Bolsheviks to attempt to take control of the Russian government. However, on the 10th of October, the decision was made to take action, and between the 23rd and the 25th of October 1917, the Red Army and the Bolsheviks took control of Petrograd. They met relatively little resistance, despite what later propaganda depicted. The takeover had been timed to coincide with the second All-Russian Congress of Soviets, and on the 25th of October, it gave legitimacy to the new government, though only due to the fact that 399 out of the 670 members were Bolshevik, and the Menshevik and SR delegates had walked out. The civil war between 1918 and 1921 was brutally fought. Thousands died through war, but also terror and famine. Imagine that you've been given this question. Pause and write it down. Explain why the Bolsheviks were victorious in the Civil War of 1918 to 1921. First off, analyse what the question is asking you to do. This will help you to be more focused in your research and planning. It is tempting to see that the question is about the Civil War and then find out everything there is to know about it. But much of what you want to find out won't be relevant to your essay. You do need a background understanding of the events of the Civil War to place your work in context. But once you've got that, try to focus more on the specific demands of the question. This question is a causation question. By asking you to explain why the Bolsheviks gained victory, it is asking you to give reasons why the Bolsheviks were able to win the Civil War. Over to you, Kat. The great thing about writing a course essay is that you don't just have to rely on your memory. You can use a plan that you've prepared in advance. The key to a successful essay is always in the planning and it's really important that you spend time getting yours right if you want to achieve your best when you come to write the essay. Examiners don't like too much description, lots of waffle, loads of background and skirting around the question. Examiners do like Essays that are tightly focused on the question, that are analytical with evidence that is carefully selected to support the argument, and a good structure. 
Your plan should therefore be analytical in the style and not just describe what happened. Which one of these two plans do you think would be most suitable for answering the question? OK, back to you, Will. You would have to work really hard to draw out any reasons why the Bolsheviks won the Civil War. It is likely that this plan would lead you towards writing a narrative of what happened. Plan 2, on the other hand, is clearly focused on the question, showing the reasons for Bolshevik victory with examples and developments. These will then become paragraphs in the exam. Using a plan style that is clear and easy to read is really important if you are writing your essay under a time limit. You don't want to waste time looking for that all-important point that you know is there somewhere. Colour coding is another useful way of linking points or showing clearly the separate issues to be discussed. Examiners also really like to see you making a judgement. With causation questions, Try to come to a conclusion as to which is the most important factor. As long as you are able to justify your opinion and weigh up the causes in relation to each other, there is no right or wrong answer. As we run through the causes, try to decide which cause you see as the most important and why. As you can see from the map, the Bolsheviks, or Reds as they were known in the Civil War, controlled a single central area. The whites, on the other hand, were scattered. This made communication and a cohesive attack very hard for the whites. The reds also had control of the majority of the rail network, making communication even easier. The areas of control also had implications for resources. The red area was well populated and was the centre of the engineering and armaments industries. They also had access to weapons from World War I. This therefore meant it was much easier for the Bolsheviks to resource their armies than the Whites. Coupled with the lack of geographical cohesion came a lack of cohesion amongst the leaders of the Whites. Unlike the Reds, who were united under and dedicated to the Bolshevik cause, the Whites were a mix of social and political groups. On one hand, there were the Mensheviks and social revolutionaries, and Tsarist supporters and landowners on the other. The only thing they had in common was their hatred of Bolshevism. They were therefore not a true, credible alternative to the Bolshevik government under Lenin. The Reds did enjoy greater levels of support than the Whites, not really because of what they had to offer, but because they were not the Whites who were seen as standing for the old order. The peasants, for example, did not want recent land gains to be returned to the landowners. Lenin and Trotsky provided effective, unified leadership. Lenin as party leader provided vision and made important policy decisions to support the war effort. For example, the decision to move from state capitalism to war communism ensured red troops were fed. Trotsky proved to be an inspirational leader of the Red Army. He imposed strict discipline and dealt with desertion severely. His commitment to the cause was a factor in maintaining the loyalty and motivation of his troops. Trotsky spent the Civil War visiting troops on board a train, which became his home for the duration of the war. His foresight to employ Tsarist officers helped gain experience in the battlefield and the use of Bolshevik political commissars took care of any dissent. Both sides used coercion to encourage support for their cause. The creation of the Cheka for the Reds was used to ensure unity amongst the Bolsheviks and Red Army, and to enforce grain requisitioning under war communism. Allied intervention on the side of the Whites probably did them more harm than good. The support given was half-hearted and lacked unity between the different nations. Their motive of maintaining an Eastern Front in World War I was removed with the end of the war in November 1918, and by the end of 1919, troops were being withdrawn. It also enabled the Reds 
to be seen as the defenders of Russia, therefore gaining more support for their cause. Did you identify a key factor? As in my plan, you could see the causes as being split into strengths of the Reds and weaknesses of the Whites, and argue it was one or the other. Alternatively, you may decide it is an individual factor, such as geographical positioning, that was key. Whatever you decide, make sure your argument runs throughout your answer, not just in the conclusion. We'll look at how to do this later on. Nineteen twenty one marked a key point in Lenin's government. The civil war was over and there was a shift in Bolshevik policy. You may therefore get questions centering on this year. There could be causation asking why there was a change or why nineteen twenty one was so crucial. Remember to look for causes and not give a description of the events of nineteen twenty one. Or they could focus on the year as a turning point. We're going to consider a different type of question to causation. Pause and write this down. In what ways can 1921 be seen as a turning point in Lenin's government? What's the first thing you should do when you get the question? That's right, analyse it. Try circling or highlighting key words and underneath each key part of the essay question, briefly jot down your interpretation. Remember, in a course essay you have more time, so this is a helpful exercise. In exam situations, indicating key words followed by a brief plan is enough. Well, the first phrase that should catch your eye is, in what ways? This is essentially a descriptive question, but it's not asking for a narrative of what happened. If you find yourself writing sentences with phrases such as next, or then, or after, it is more likely that you are writing a narrative. Tempting, but a knowledge of the event is only half the essay. What the essay is asking you to do is explain why different aspects can, in this case, be seen as a turning point. Next, the date. 1921. What happened? It might be worth jotting down key events. Victory in the Civil War. Kronstadt mutiny, new economic policy, political repression. Turning point. That indicates you're looking at whether 1921 was a year of significant change. Lenin's government. That tells you that you don't have to look beyond 1924 and Lenin's death. How do you go about planning and researching an essay like this? Well, you're looking for evidence to explain 1921 as a turning point. Keep focused. A good tip is to have your essay title with your analysis on what it means in front of you, whilst you are researching, planning and writing your essay. So how do you avoid narrative? In your planning, try to structure your plan to help you analyse the evidence. You could use a spider diagram, as in the Civil War essay. Or you could try something like this. No longer in a state of war, by 1921 the last of the White Army had been defeated and the Treaty of Riga had ended war with Poland. This meant that Lenin's government was able to operate in peacetime for the first time. It also meant that conditions tolerated under war to ensure the Whites didn't win were no longer acceptable. In the countryside, peasants revolted against grain requisitioning. The Red Army was brutal in quashing uprisings. Disturbances spread to the towns and cities where trouble in the countryside had led to severe food shortages for urban workers. This acted as a turning point, as it meant Lenin realised he would not be able to establish a stable government without the cooperation of the peasants. It would have an impact on the creation of the new economic policy. In March 1921, sailors at the Kronstadt naval base mutinied in support of demonstrators and strikers in Petrograd and issued a 15-point programme condemning the Bolshevik government. They were again suppressed by the Red Army two weeks after beginning the revolt, but they had a lasting impact on government policy. 
In 1917, the sailors at Kronstadt had been strong supporters of the Bolshevik takeover, yet within four years, they were calling for change. It signalled to Lenin the growing discontent with Bolshevik rule and the need to change policy to save the revolution. The shift came in the form of a new economic policy. It was introduced at the 10th Party Congress shortly after Kronstadt. Lenin claimed it was a strategic retreat in the interest of protecting the revolution, but it did mark a major turning point in Bolshevik policy. War communism had aimed to replace a free market with a centralised, state-controlled economy. NEP, on the other hand, reintroduced elements of private trading, although major industries were still kept under state control. It replaced the harsh action of grain requisitioning with a tax in kind and allowed a surplus to be sold on the private market. A new currency was introduced to replace the breakdown in the ruble under war communism. Popular discontent, the Kronstadt rising and party dissatisfaction are what many saw as an ideological step backward in NEP also led to increased political repression. The decree on party unity, also passed at the 10th Party Congress, banned factionalism within the party and followed with a purge on party membership. There was no longer the possibility of debate amongst the party. The word of the leadership was now to be accepted without question. At the same time, any party other than the Bolshevik party was banned, thus creating a one-party state. This was accompanied by arrests and show trials to reinforce the message. Whilst ending party debate was an about turn, repression of forces against Bolshevik rule was not. The Cheka, for example, had been created in December 1917. 1921 also marked a relaxation of relations with foreign powers and the development of a policy protecting communism in one state, rather than promoting world revolution. The Comintern had been set up in 1919, however, by 1921, most other communist-inspired risings in Europe had failed. War, including civil war, was over, and economic meltdown had prompted Lenin to look west for trade, finance and industrial knowledge. For example, trade treaties were signed with Britain and Germany in 1921. Hopefully, by having two columns in your planning, you'll remember to analyse the evidence and not just describe it. The second column forces you to explain why the issues you're describing can be seen as a turning point. If you have a preference for a spider diagram, then you could try writing your assessment in a different colour. When you come to write the essay, it will remind you that you always have to relate your points back to the question. Just describing the events of 1921 and showing how the events can be seen as a turning point is the difference between a borderline essay and a very good essay. <laughs>An assessment of Lenin's success. The final essay type we're going to have a look at is one that asks you to make a judgement. In this section we'll focus on ways of writing your final essay. Hopefully you've picked up some tips for planning in the last two sections. The question we're going to answer is, how far do you agree that Lenin has successfully established Bolshevik rule in Russia by the time of his death in 1924? Now, when you see a question starting with phrases such as how far, to what extent, or do you agree, you should automatically be reminding yourself that this is a question where you are going to demonstrate evaluation. The examiner wants to know what you think about a particular issue. They are also going to want to see how you arrived at that opinion, so you must also provide evidence to support it. Let's assume that you've done your plan and that you are now ready to start writing. How are you going to make sure that your essay is tightly focused on the question and is well structured? Hopefully your plan has five or six key areas you are going to discuss in your essay and you have already decided upon your point of view. Writing it should be the easy part. All essays must have an introduction. A common mistake here is to spend too long giving the background to the essay. Your introduction should be short, snappy and do just enough to whet the reader's appetite. 
try to catch the examiner's eye. Look at these two opening sentences. Which is going to make you read on? Lenin died in January 1924 at the age of 53 from a brain hemorrhage after having suffered a series of strokes since 1922. It was with much suffering and compromise that on Lenin's death, the Bolshevik state was unchallenged in Russia. Sentence A is descriptive and doesn't really hint at what the essay is about. From the opening sentence, it could be a biographical account of Lenin's life. Sentence B, on the other hand, is more analytical and is hinting at the argument and content of the essay. Your introduction should be signposting to the reader the way through your answer. I'm going to complete the introduction now. See if you can work out what the argument is and the factors to be covered. It was with much suffering and compromise that on Lenin's death, the Bolshevik state was unchallenged in Russia. Lenin had led the party through revolution, civil war and economic crisis, establishing a one-party state. However, policies made along the way were not all successful, and some led towards a government that was not the communist state initially perceived. In particular, the creation of a dictatorship that relied on terror to suppress opposition and economic U-turn in the new economic policy. There were, however, some social policies that did aim to set the foundations for a true workers' state. The argument, therefore, is that whilst Bolshevik rule was established, it was at the expense of ideological aims. In other words, on the one hand, Lenin successfully established Bolshevik rule, but on the other, failed to do this through Bolshevik ideology. To support this view, the topics to be discussed will be Lenin's leadership, one-party state, use of terror, economic policy and social policy. Try to treat each topic in a separate paragraph and look at each paragraph as a mini-essay. Have an introductory sentence, provide the evidence, then close by summarising the argument and linking to the question. For example, Lenin's leadership ensured that the Bolshevik party was able to successfully continue government in the face of major obstacles. It was Lenin, for example, that pushed for a revolution in October 1917. He was willing to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk despite major loss of land. This enabled him to withdraw from World War I to protect and further the revolution in Russia, particularly against the growing threat of civil war. During the Civil War, Lenin was not afraid to sanction harsh policies to ensure Bolshevik survival. Policies such as the use of terror and grain requisitioning under war communism. His decision to introduce the new economic policy may have been ideologically unsound and unpopular with the party, but it ensured the government's survival in the face of widespread popular discontent. It was Lenin's opportunistic and realistic attitude that helped to ensure the Bolshevik party's survival. Realism that meant sacrificing ideology for political survival. In a question that examines success, you can also structure your paragraphs giving evidence to demonstrate success and failure before coming to a judgment. For example, by the time of Lenin's death in January 1924, he had established a one-party state. The government created was highly centralised, with decision-making powers centred on the Sovnarkom, or Council of People's Commissars. And there was no opportunity for political opposition from either outside or within the party. Okay. On the one hand, this can be seen as a success. By 1924, Bolshevik rule was unchallenged, and in any case, Lenin argued that dictatorship of the proletariat was a necessary interlude before control could be passed to the workers. However, the same achievement can also be seen as a failure. 
Lenin failed to put in place safeguards against the abuse of power inherent in any dictatorship. Whereas Lenin perhaps saw the dictatorship as a means to an end, he could not be certain that others wouldn't use it to further their own power. Therefore, whilst Lenin had successfully established Bolshevik rule by 1924, the means by which he had achieved this was open to abuse and manipulation. Try having a go at constructing a paragraph yourself. Here's a section of the plan on economic policy. Think about opening the paragraph, providing and assessing the evidence, and closing off the paragraph relating back to the question. Other key issues here to discuss include terror, world revolution, and social reform. Once you've written your essay, you've got one last chance to really impress the examiner with your ability to create a tightly focused, evaluative essay. So make your conclusion something to really sock it to them. Don't be tempted to introduce anything new or to launch into description. Your argument will just get lost amongst waffle. What you need to do is remind the examiner how great your answer was. Sum up briefly your argument and the points you made to support your argument. By 1924, the Bolshevik party had been established as the unchallenged ruler of Russia. Lenin had saved the government from collapse at key moments and recognised the need for flexibility in establishing Bolshevik rule. For example, in the introduction of new economic policy. In this, Lenin can be judged as successful. However, the extent of this success can be qualified on the grounds that it was achieved through suffering. For example, the hardship imposed by grain requisitioning to ensure success in the civil war and abandonment of principles such as the NEP or Brest-Litovsk. Socially, Lenin successfully began education programmes and he encouraged experimentation. However, it was on the provision that it was proletarian. He coupled this with censorship for those who opposed the government. Bolshevik rule had been established through terror, repression and dictatorship. And whilst this was not seen as a failure by Lenin, but merely as a necessary transitional period, it did pave the way for later abuse. Lenin was therefore successful in establishing Bolshevik rule by 1924. But it was one based not on an idealistic workers' government, but on fear and realism.